Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program is all about visiting our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And like all Wheels Up episodes, it has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip around D.C., looking at cool parks, buildings, museums, monuments, and we'll even visit the National Zoo. Next, we'll craft with Caroline, making an origami paper airplane that really flies a cute panda craft with paper or maybe a marshmallow, and creating your own scenic picture with beautiful cherry blossom trees around the Washington Monument. Finally, I hope you'll shout out your answers and play along with Washington, D.C. Trivia. When the first U.S. President, George Washington, took office in 1789, the capital of the United States was in New York City. But the 13 original states wanted a capital that was not too far north or too far south. So in 1790, Washington chose a place in the middle, right between the states of Maryland and Virginia. Washington, D.C. is a federal district, 10 miles square, overseen by Congress and not in any state. Today, I thought it would be fun to take a trip around our nation's capital and look at a few of my favorite spots. First, let's take a look at the Supreme Court, home to nine justices. They decide cases about whether laws or executive orders are constitutional. It's the top of the judicial branch of the United States government. Along with the executive, the president, and the legislature, the Congress, the judicial branch is the third branch of the American tree of government. All three branches work together in a system called checks and balances, to make sure that no branch could become too powerful or controlling. The President of the United States nominates justices, and then Congress questions them to ensure they're right for the position, called confirmation. Once the judges are confirmed by the Senate, they're a Supreme Court Justice for Life. ...that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. While the U.S. Supreme Court has always been known as the highest court of the land, There's one more court that sits even above the Supreme Court. Literally, there is a basketball court sitting on the fifth floor, one floor above the actual courtroom. Now, just across the street is the Capitol Building, where the United States Legislative Branch works. Congress, both the Senate and the House of Representatives, meet to write and vote on laws and confirm presidential appointments. The Capitol has a large dome in the center, above a rotunda, a large space shaped like a circle. There are two wings that are connected to the rotunda on opposite sides. The north wing is where the Senate, two from each state, meet, and the south wing is where the 435 House of Representatives meet. Thousands of people tour the U.S. Capitol building every year, but very few get a first-hand look inside the building's most iconic feature. While it looks like the walls of the dome are solid marble, the shell is actually hollow, made out of metal, painted white, and supported like an iron frame skyscraper. The tight space between the exterior facade and the interior wall contains a secret stairwell with 365 steps. Up at the tip top of the dome, the stair leads to a small room. This round lookout spot is the vertical projection you see in between the circular bit of the dome and the Statue of Freedom. While it may look small from a distance, that statue stands 19 feet 6 inches tall and weighs approximately 15,000 pounds. The only way you can visit this secret space is to be a member of Congress or one of their special guests. Did you know there are miles and miles of tunnels under the Capitol building? There's even a subway system to help senators and members of the House move between their offices and the Capitol building. You can look up Senate subway train on YouTube and watch politicians riding the rails between the Capitol and their offices. Just two miles away is 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, the address of the White House. It's where the president and first family live and home to the executive branch of the government. The president is commander-in-chief of the military, has the power to sign or veto legislation from Congress, enforce and implement laws, appoint judges, and has an important role in diplomacy. Although President Washington oversaw the construction of the White House, he never lived in it. 
it was not until 1800, when the White House was nearly completed, that its first residence, the second U.S. President John Adams and his wife Abigail, moved in. Since that time, each president has made his own changes and additions. The White House is truly a mansion. It spans six floors, includes 132 rooms, 35 bathrooms, has 28 fireplaces, eight staircases, three elevators. It sounds like an epic setup for a game of hide-and-go-seek. The second and third floor contain private living spaces for the president, the president's family, and the president's guests. It even contains a movie theater, bowling alley, swimming pool, and tennis court. The west and east wings of the White House connect with the main building and contain offices for government workers. The office of the president, called the Oval Office, is in the west wing. The vice president also has an office in the west wing, and the east wing holds other offices, including those of the president's spouse and staff. Presidents and their families aren't the only ones to live in the White House. Presidential pets and animals have roamed the grounds. Family dogs Bo and Sonny were quite the sight during Barack Obama's presidency. The Bush family, both father and son, served as president and each had English Springer Spaniel dogs. Bill Clinton had a black and white cat called Socks. It was a stray the family adopted in 1991. But not all pets have been cats and dogs. Caroline, the daughter of John F. Kennedy, had a pony named Macaroni. The Sultan of Oman gave Martin Van Buren, the eighth president, a pair of tiger cubs. But the president with the most pets was Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president. His six kids had snakes, dogs, cats, a badger, birds, guinea pigs, and more. Now, just beyond the north yard of the White House lies Lafayette Square, previously used as a racetrack a graveyard, a zoo, a slave market, and an encampment for soldiers during the War of 1812. Now, Lafayette Park is a place where many influential protests have taken place. Inspired by the First Amendment, citizens continue to exercise their right of free speech here, using Lafayette Park as their stage and the White House as their audience. On the south side of the White House is a 52-acre park which leads south to the National Mall. Now, the National Mall stretches from the U.S. Capitol West to the Lincoln Memorial on the Potomac River and from the Thomas Jefferson Memorial North to Constitution Avenue. More than 25 million people visit this national park each year. That's more visitors than Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Grand Canyon National Parks combined. The National Mall is home to more than 26 miles of pedestrian sidewalks and 8 miles of bike trails. Between 25,000 and 30,000 local sports enthusiasts use the 15 softball fields, 8 volleyball courts, 2 rugby fields, and it's home to a variety of different sports and recreation activities year-round. The mall is also home to 11 of the 19 museums that make up the Smithsonian Institution, the world's largest museum, education, and research complex. All of these are free and contain many famous treasures to explore. The U.S. Botanic Garden is a living plant museum, informing us of the importance of plants to not just humans, but the Earth's whole ecosystem. The Air and Space Museum boasts the world's largest collection of airplanes and spacecrafts, distributed between 23 galleries. You can explore what it's like to be an astronaut, experience flight simulators, marvel at iconic aviators, and enjoy the planetarium. Be awed by everything from dinosaurs to diamonds at the American Museum of Natural History. How about taking a peek at the beautiful First Lady's inaugural gowns at the American History Museum? Or examine the African-American story and its impact on American and world history at the National Museum of African American History and Culture. More than just museums, the mall contains many memorial monuments to U.S. presidents and to those who lost their lives serving the country 
during World War II, the Korean War, and Vietnam War. Towering above it all is the obelisk, built to honor George Washington, America's first president. Construction began in 1848, but a lack of funds, political squabbling, and the Civil War interrupted the work, and it first opened in 1884. At 555 feet and 5 inches, the Washington Monument was the tallest freestanding structure in the world for 20 years until the completion of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. From here within sight is the reflecting pool that connects the iconic Lincoln Memorial and World War II Memorial. Ascend the 145 white marble steps at the Lincoln Memorial. Step forward into the shrine room with the seated great emancipator, Abraham Lincoln. He was the 16th president of the United States who infamously led the country through the Civil War and was instrumental in ending slavery. Springtime in Washington, D.C. kicks off every year with the city's famous Cherry Blossom Festival, when the fluffy pink cherry trees around the National Mall and Tidal Basin burst into bloom. These 3,000 cherry blossom trees were donated by the Japanese, and the Tidal Basin provides great photo ops. Along the basin is the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, with its iconic columns making it look like a smaller version of the Roman Pantheon. Its interior walls contain inscriptions from the Declaration of Independence. Further along the basin, the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial pays tribute to the best-known leader in the Civil Rights Movement. The centerpiece of the memorial is a 30-foot statue of Dr. King, featuring his likeness carved into the Stone of Hope, which emerges powerfully from two large boulders known as the Mountain of Despair. Together they represent soul-stirring words from Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. The latest memorial opened in September 2020, commemorating Dwight David Eisenhower, a five-star general. He led the D-Day invasion and helped defeat the Nazis. A two-term president, he brought stability to post-war America. Let's move beyond the mall. Luckily, D.C. has a rapid transit system called the Metro, which is the second busiest after New York City subway. There are six colored lines in the system. Let's hop aboard the red line to visit Rock Creek Park, boasting over 32 miles of hiking trails, horseback riding, and the famous Smithsonian National Zoo. Home to 1,800 animals from 300 different species, this free zoo is spectacular, and its most popular exhibit is the featured two giant pandas and their new baby panda boy. The zoo's pandas are on loan from the China Wildlife Conservation Association, and the National Zoo has had pandas since 1972, when two were received from China as part of President Nixon's historic visit. Aren't they adorable? There are so many things to do in D.C., and I've spent lots of time here. You can watch real money being printed at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Come face to face with all 45 presidents at Madame Tussauds. Learn firsthand how to go undercover as a super spy at the International Spy Museum. Or how about visiting 175 countries in D.C.? Well, not the countries themselves, but these embassies, ambassadors, residences, and international cultural centers are technically considered foreign soil. Right across the river is Arlington National Cemetery, the final resting place for thousands of servicemen and women and two presidents, both President Kennedy and President Taft. The white headstones that seem to stretch to the horizon are a striking and somber tribute. Whenever I'm in D.C., I visit the site of my father and mother-in-law who are interred there. Well, our trip around Washington, D.C. must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed the journey. Which place was your favorite? Hi, my name is Caroline, and I'm so excited to do arts and crafts with you today. Today's video was all about Washington, D.C., so today we're going to make a paper airplane, a cherry blossom craft, and then a funny marshmallow panda. I hope you have fun!
So now we're going to make a paper airplane because in the video you saw that in Washington DC there's an air and space museum and they have a lot of planes there. So to make the paper airplane all you need is a piece of paper and it can be any color you want. So first you're going to take the top of the paper and fold it to the bottom the long way and then open it back up and flip it and then you want to fold the top of the paper down just a little bit like that and then flip it over again and fold the corner to the middle and then the same thing on the other side like that and then you want to fold the top like that to the bottom and then take the top and fold it back up and then flip it and fold the corner to the middle and then the same thing on the other side and then open these back up and then take the corner and fold it to the top, like to the crease you just made like that. And then the same thing on the other side. Like this. And then you fold it in. Like that. And then when you go like this and you pull that up, there's gonna be a pocket underneath and you wanna take the top corner and kind of bend it and then put it into the pocket. Just like that. So now we're gonna fold it in half and then to make the wings, you take one side of this and fold it back like that and then flip it over and go like this. And then when you hold the middle, you have the paper airplane. So then when you're done making it, you can decorate it. And then when you fly it, it'll go really far. This is just a fun thing that I wanted to show you. But since the National Zoo in Washington DC has panda bears, I thought it would be a good idea to use a marshmallow and make it look like a panda bear using these edible markers. So I'm going to draw on it to make it look like a panda bear. So I'm going to draw the eyes first. Like that. And then I'm going to draw the nose and the mouth, and then the ears. And if you don't have marshmallows or the edible markers, you can take a piece of paper and roll it and then draw your panda on it. cherry blossom painting because in Washington DC during the spring the cherry blossom trees are everywhere and it looks really pretty. So what you need is a piece of white paper, a piece of blue paper for the background, and if you want to make a frame you need two pe more pieces of paper and I'm using black as my frame so I'm using two black pieces of paper. And then to make my cherry blossoms, I'm using pink paint, but you can also use a pink marker or a pink crayon, but you need something pink. 
And then you also need glue, scissors, and then for the actual tree, I'm using a brown marker, but you can also use brown paint. So now we're going to make the Washington Monument, which is a very famous monument in Washington, D.C. that you saw in the video today. So I'm using my white paper, and the Washington Monument is really tall, so I'm gonna make sure it takes up my whole entire paper. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and draw a line almost to the very top and do the same thing on the other side. And then at the top, there's a point. So you could draw the point at the top like this. And now I'm going to cut it out. So now I have my Washington Monument all cut out. And now I'm going to glue it on in the paper. And I'm gonna glue it in the middle of my paper, but you can glue it wherever you want. So I'm putting the glue on, and then I'm gonna stick it on so that it touches the bottom. Just like that. So now I'm going to draw the trunk and the branches of the cherry blossom trees. And I'm using my brown marker to do that. And they're going to be on the sides of the Washington Monument, but you can make as many as you want. So I'm just gonna draw lines up and then some branches coming off of it. So now that I drew in all of my branches, we're going to add the cherry blossom flowers. So I'm using my pink paint and I'm going to dip my finger in and then I'm gonna put my cherry blossom flowers all over the place. And they don't have to be in a specific spot. They can be anywhere you want. And if you don't want to get your hands messy, you can wear a glove while you do this part. And you can also use a marker if you want and just draw in the cherry blossoms too. So now I'm doing the other side. Just like that. So now my cherry blossom trees are all done. And now I'm going to add some details to my picture. So I'm using a yellow crayon and I'm gonna draw a sun in the corner and then color it in. Now add the rays. You don't have to do this step, but you can if you want to. You can add all the details you want like that. And then I'm going to use a black marker and draw in some birds. You can add as many as you want. Just like that. I hope you had fun making these Washington DC crafts with me. Bye! Welcome to Washington, D.C. Trivia. There are 10 questions with four answers, only one of which is correct. I hope you'll play along. Who's ready to play? Question number one. Who was the first president to live in the White House? A. George Washington, B. John Adams, C. Abraham Lincoln, or D. Ulysses S. Grant? Who was the first president to live in the White House? Answers, please. And the answer is B. John Adams. George Washington never did get to live in the White House. Question number two. What is the tallest building in Washington, D.C.? A. The Washington Monument. B. The Capitol. C. The White House. Or D. The Lincoln Memorial. Which one is the tallest, skinniest building? And the answer is... A, the Washington Monument. Question number three. How do DC residents refer to their subway system? A, light rail, B, the metro, C, the underground, or D, DC light? Hmm. 
they have a very interesting subway system. It's very clean and very fast. And the answer is B, the Metro. Question number four. What's the name of the DC Museum devoted to flight and space exploration? It's one of the Smithsonian. A, NASA Museum. B, the Wright Brothers Memorial. C, the Air and Space Museum. Or D, the Airplane Museum. Have you ever been? And the answer is C, the Air and Space Museum. It's one of the most popular. Question number five. Which two states gave up land to create Washington, D.C.? A, Delaware and Maryland. B, Virginia and West Virginia. C, Maryland and Virginia. Or D, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. How good is your geography? And the answer is C, Maryland and Virginia. Washington, D.C. is in a state. Question number six. What is on the top floor of the Supreme Court? A, a ceremonial courtroom. B, a basketball court. C, a museum. Or D, a secret room. What is on the top, the fifth floor of the Supreme Court? And the answer is a basketball court. (laughs) Could you believe it? Question number seven. When and from where did the first two panda bears come to the National Zoo? A, in 1950 from Russia. B, in 1972 from China. C, in 1990 from Japan. Or D, in 2010 from Brazil. Those panda bears are so cute. And they came from B, in 1972 from China. Question number eight. Which branch of government decides whether a law or action is constitutional? A, judicial. B, legislative. C, executive. Or D, administrative. (laughs) And the answer is A, judicial. Because B, the legislature makes laws and C, the executive administers them. Question number nine. What's the name for the area between the Capitol building and the Lincoln Memorial? A, President's Park. B, People's Park. C, National Mall. Or D, U.S. Constitutional. I like all of those names, actually. But what's the name of that area that stretches? And the answer is C, National Mall. It's a big national park. Question number 10. Last and final question. The original cherry trees were gifted to the U.S. from what country? A, Germany. B, Vietnam. C, Japan. Or D, South Africa. Those cherry blossoms are so beautiful and fluffy. And the answer is C, Japan. Well, I hope you enjoyed playing Washington, D.C. trivia and traveling around our nation's capital. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more Wheels Up episodes on different topics, you can watch us on YouTube at Sunrise Association Wheels Up. We have our own playlists.